Hi, good evening, y'all. I am poem praise to peace and blessings to you. I do have an evening read for you this evening. We are going to be coming out of Sacred Woman by Queen Afua. We are currently in chapter number. I believe it's chapter eight, John. No, we finished eight. It's chapter nine, okay? This is gateway number four, Sacred Beauty. And I do have a picture here. Right here is where we're going to start. We're going to start in, in this section right here is where we're going to start, okay? And the picture I just so showed you is this cultural, the sacred dress that affirms natural beauty was designed by Natur Tabooties touch. Natur NTR. The next word T E B U T I. Pause for yes. Touch. T O U C H. Okay. And this section is reclaiming my ancient African beauty. And this section reads as such. I now reclaim my sacred African beauty legacy that was designed to empower me. I will express my own natural beauty and grace from the ancient African lotus flower that sat on my crown and draped over my first eye to indicate my thoughts of divine perfection and illumination. To the crown I wore on my head to indicate high spiritual consciousness from the headband swirling around my first eye to protect my higher mind and keep me in tune and the circular earrings that link me to the infinite continuum of the cosmos and my earrings of gold and silver of Fainets, F-A-I-E-N-C-E, -E, and Gems. I see worn by my ancestors carved on the walls of Abydos, A-B-Y-D-O-S, Amarna, and Pale, P H I L A E, to the floral colors that breathe me in rainbow radiance and my form fitting and full flowing wraps and robes. I anoint myself with spiritual oils, with mandrake, frankincense, and myrrh, sage, and cedar to protect me from any harm and danger. I will do all these things and more to create harmonious vibrations around myself and 
my mate. I will lovingly do my part to restore the love and respect that my nature, that by nature, we have for each other. I will groom, calm, and dress my soul by playing and listening to the sounds of the divine nature with the sounds of harps, bells, strings, flutes, and drums surrounded by the melodic voices of my ancestry that continue to live in me. You ask, where is my ancient African beauty? Hmm. I am here and I'm looking y'all give me a second I'm looking hold up and thus it is here I defend my right to be here I stand Y'all know y'all, I'm sick. But that was the end of that section right there. Let me see what our time looking like. Yeah, we could go into this next one. Call for a new era of African beauty by Keita, K A I T H A, Het Heteru. And let's go over this section. The world is indebted to us for the benefits of civilization. They stole our arts and sciences from Africa. Then why should we be ashamed of ourselves? Marcus Garvey, honorable ancestor. Uh, telling our stories from an African perspective is important. It gives us the truth about ourselves. It is our way of looking into our past and remembering with the aid of images and writings found on temple walls, tombs, and monuments. How we worked, played, dressed, and lived every day without our story researched and written by us. We have no link to our past, no connection to our ancestors. Without our own identity, we are adrift in a sea of constantly changing images controlled by the image makers of the larger culture. We are left searching for self being in style with whatever is in the current fashion of the day. One day is Jahiri curls we maintain by wearing plastic shower caps in the streets. Next day, it's blue or green contact lenses. Next, is pants worn down below or behind. Beautiful Nubian African women existed before the beginning of recorded history. Their timeless beauty reflected their inner state of mind over 5,000 years ago in the ancient days of our Nubian African civilization in the land of Tawi, pre-dynastic Egypt. The temples were schools of learning where the sacred arts of beautifying and in Nobili, the body temple were taught. 
in the temple of Het Haru, dedicated to the sacred principles of divine love, beauty, nurturance, joy, music, dance, young women were initiated by wise women called Abuti, A-B-U-T-U, or priestesses. They were taught the sacredness of great divine universal mother, Mut Ast, renamed Isis by the Greeks. They learned that love and beauty are divine in essence and began with inner harmony at the center of one's being that radiates out to the world. Beauty was not just cosmetic, only enhancing the appearance. It was also cosmological. True beauty involved knowing the spiritual, mental, and physical laws governing the universe. The young initiates learned that to be beautiful was to be in harmony with nature. The young initiates learned that to be beautiful was to be in harmony with nature. We always saw ourselves as beautiful. Knowing that we were beautiful generated respect for our body as a sacred divine gift to be honored and cared for. Beauty to Nubian African women meant taking the time to nurture the self. We knew that being beautiful meant taking charge of our thoughts and actions. The word for beautiful in our ancient Maturu, MTU, NTR language is Nefer. We are descendants of beautiful, royal African women. Queen Tyree, 1415 to 1340 BCE, was a powerful Nubian African queen from the land of Kush. The great royal spouse of Aminhotep III was the mother of Pharaohs Akehin. Nathan and to Tank Haman and mother-in-law of Nefertiti, one of history's most classical beauties. Tayi reigned as queen consort and queen mother of Kemet, Kemet for half a century. She had a great influence on arts and the fashions of the time in Kemet, Kemet, K-H-A-M-I-T. From the changing of hairstyles, she adorned her head with short Nubian-style wigs instead of the long-haired wigs fashionable at the time to the wearing of jewelry. Hmm. So that queen right there we're actually going to wrap this up but after I'm reading that, that queen right there actually wore something totally different than what everybody else was doing. Did you hear what I just read? She had a great influence on arts and the fashions of the time and commit from the changing of hairstyles. She adorned her hair with short Nubian style wigs so she had a short hairstyle instead of the long haired wigs which were fashionable at the time. She wore something not fashionable at the time. Hmm. That's just something for you to think on. I'm thinking on it too after I just read it. This does complete uh, this evening read. Stay tuned to Poem Praise too. We're going to be, when we come out of Sacred Woman again, we're going to be going over the section, Reclaiming Our Heritage. Mm -hmm. Reclaiming. And that's that's the next section we got going over. So I do want for you and your family, I want for you to be safe, to be well, to be blessed, and it be it thy will. Let us all continue to heal. And I, poem praise too. I'll talk and I'll see you. I'll see you. 
I'll see you later, y'all. Till next time. Peace and blessings.